So Saturday, July 20th, was our last day in Catalonia. It was the day that we had to say goodbye to Puy Ridge, and it was the night of our last performance for the Cant Coral Festival in Catalonia, uh, which was at Casa Bellier VR. I had chronicled most of the day with the vlog update I made from Barcelona the following night. So we got all checked out and got on our bus. I had focused so much on chronicling the day that I didn't have a chance to pause to really remark and reflect on just how emotional it was leaving Puy Ridge, particularly the people that we had encountered, Mama Rosa, Conchi, Henrique. It was tough saying goodbye, but even then, I had that sense that the people that we had met, the hospitality we encountered, would be lingering and would probably be something that I would reflect upon and be affected by for a long time to come. And we made our way to Casa Valley Vilar, but first we stopped at a small place for shopping, you know, what's like normal place, like supermarket. For me, I loved it because, you know, having been to the tourist parts of Barcelona, you know, uh, th there was a little embarrassment, like, you know, I don't know if you'd be interested in this, it's just a grocery store, you have these in the States. Yeah, sure, but not like this. It's people watching, this is a wonderful thing, you know, you see people, you know, the people shopping, what are they buying, what kinds of things do they offer? Like, whole, oh, like, you know, pig legs, a ham, cured, you know, things that are unique to the region, stuff that you just, you know, don't have back home, and just the vibe or the energy of people going about their normal lives. You know, for the same reason, you know, when I've gone to Mass on Sundays here, I, I haven't gone to, like, you know, Sagrada Familia for Mass. I mean, we went to Sagrada Familia, but, uh, you know, with all due respect to its status as a basilica and as an important site and a work of art, you know, it has more of a museum feel. So, um, yeah, after the supermarket and buying some necessities like like stuff for a mosquito bite that I have, my I have an allergic reaction now to mosquito bites that seems to worsen as I age. Um, so got this and a couple of food stuff, just simple things. You get to find how like how like their 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 chewing gum is different, the packs that they come in. Um, just you know, it's just cool. I like it. Or gazpacho in a bottle. Now that that's cool. You know. Uh, Considering that after I got the bug bite, I started running a fever. Running a fever, my resistance lowered. You might be able to hear, I've got some congestion going on. Not a great thing for a singer. Not ideal uh, to be unwell. We got the Casa del Vilar. There was a group lunch together. I've, I've eaten more than my fill of paella. You do OD on it after a while. Then we, we, we rested up a little bit. And that was a point where I actually got to get to know the Mirceasev choir members a little bit better. It was just this wonderful feeling of camaraderie, uh, especially since we had just had our performance in Puy the night before and we'd just met each other. And that by the time Saturday rolled around, we were hanging out to ourselves. Uh, the Macedonians would play games in, in front of the casino. We would just hang out and chill and chat. For me, it was meaningful because I, I really enjoy getting to know people. I, I feel like I understand the world I live in a little better, understand myself a little better, getting to look at your life or your world through another lens. So for me, the chill time wound up being very important because it was helping me to process, you know, what I was experiencing, what I was going through, and also to help keep me settled about knowing that this was the end of our festival week, that this was our last one of these, and that I didn't know what the next week would be like but I knew that it would be different. So uh, the concert started and, and the first act up was a local group. So as it turned out, they're a gospel group, a Catalonian gospel choir. And, and it was delightful. And it, some of them approached me afterwards and says, you know, uh, how did you feel about it? You know, we're not, we're not American and we're not black. And I said, you know, it's funny. A lot of school groups do it uh, because it's up-tempo and they try to keep it interesting. And, you know, uh, young people, especially in the US, our lack of support for arts are not classically trained you know, music theory or, or classical forms of music as they were. And, you know, one of the reasons they choose those kinds of things is because it, it's interesting enough to keep them engaged, hopefully as an audience draw or whatever. Uh, and I've heard, and I told them, you know, I said, I've heard gospel sung well before by people who aren't black, but the, the feeling's missing. And they were worried about their accents, you know, their pronunciation. I said, you know, the funny thing is, more than most groups, probably most groups, definitely more than most groups that I've encountered, I told them, uh, you captured the feeling of it. I think that's the most important thing. If you actually feel a connection to this music, if it is actually a part of you, 
you haven't just appropriated it for entertainment value, you know, that it actually speaks to your heart. I would guess that that's where you're coming from, because that's what it sounded like to me. A little bit of nervousness about the language, yeah, did I hear a couple of mispronunciations? Yeah, I mean, I'm not telling you that I didn't, but uh, that I, t I told them I felt they captured the energy, but here they are singing gospel music because it's something that touches their heart. Wonderful group. Next up was the Macedonian Choir. We were waiting in the wings and having a ball. We kind of hang out together a little bit more because now we're acquainted. That was great. Then we were up, and as it turned out, we were pretty much the closing act, and that was it for this music festival. After Saturday's performance at Casino Bures, there was a reception that was held. That, for me, felt like it had a finality to it, that we had completed our week of, of doing festivals. I knew that as busy as it was, uh, this was kind of a farewell to not just the people we had met, the folks that we had encountered, but to that phase of the tour. We, we did, you know, stay for the reception and hang out, you know, you're, you know, you, they treat you like a star. It's kind of funny. Yeah, a little embarrassing, you know, a little hard to get used to. But it was late by the time we got you know, out of our costumes, wiped our faces off and all that stuff, got packed up and got on the bus. The bus ride from Casabella and Villar to Barcelona, our last bus ride from deep in Catalonia, wound up being very bittersweet. It was really a goodbye of sorts. And we knew that this would be our last bus ride with Mama Rosa and with Ivan, who'd been taking us everywhere and looking after us. Uh, by then, we'd all taken to calling her Mama Rosa. There's a microphone in front of the bus and she addressed us all and she said that she was very happy and very proud to be our mama. And from then on, whenever she'd make announcements, she would call, she would call us her babies. It was so, so tender. Actually, English falls short. We'd, we'd say amorosa in, in Spanish. Earlier that day, when we were at the, at the store, I'd actually had a chance to chat with her a little bit. I just won't ever forget just what a sweet lady she is. She has a, a kind, generous spirit. The question she asks you, uh, the way she looks after you, so very maternal. As a Filipino, I find that there are a lot of uh, cultural things that we actually inherit from the Spanish. The way that, that we're welcoming, I got to experience through them. The way we look after each other, uh, I had an experience of that through them. I suppose it's just testament to how sometimes you understand things about yourself by trying to understand others. Arriving at our accommodation in Barcelona was actually a, a sad kind of moment. It was a night of many partings. We checked into our accommodation, settled into our rooms. I am in what looks like a dormitory room because we, these two nights, are staying in a seminary a legit Silesian seminary. There are seminarians and residents here. Some of the guests here are very diverse. You do see people who look like they might be refugees, uh, you know, who have fled across the Mediterranean. Being a Catholic institution, it would make a lot of sense for, for there to be, you know, refugees and residents here offered a place to stay and, and, and a place to eat. I've seen uh, also some um, some small families uh, with children or babies that look like they might be special needs kids you know, who are visiting hospitals. This is a Catholic place. You know, the refugee, the orphan, the unwell, the infirm, I mean, they're welcome here. They should be. I don't know about anyone else, but if I didn't already know that next day was Sunday, that I would be going to church, uh, that I knew that we would have rehearsal, I could have spent a lot of time just really reflecting upon everything we had seen and everything we experienced that week. The festival period is over. We, we are finished or done with being treated like the honored and invited guests. Uh, this next week, we're competitors.